Hello everybody, peace of the Lord Jesus. Um, today I'm going to be exposing this video by Let the Quran Speak, um, discussing the people of the book, and we'll see how Muslims love to lie to everybody, and uh, it's really sick that they have no shame with this, and that they practice taqiyya, trying to deceive everybody. So, let's go. You're watching Let the Quran Speak, we're talking about the people of the book. Uh, Brother Shabir, uh, what does the Quran refer to when it says people of the book? Who is it referring to? It's referring to people who have received a previous scriptural revelation. Commentators on the Quran have identified uh, these primarily as being uh, Jews and Christians uh, because of the Old and, and the New Testament containing divine revelations which have come from God. Uh, but uh, uh, legal experts uh, of, uh, in the Islamic faith have also extended that definition uh, to include uh, other uh, communities who uh, were faith communities and who have some sort of divine scripture or scripture that they attribute uh, to divinity. So could it include, for example, Hindus? Or how far in, does it in go? In some contexts, uh, some scholars have extended the thinking to that uh, extent. but. Uh, if, if one were to say Jews and Christians, there seems to be no dispute among Muslim scholars that they are included among the people of the book. So how does the, the Quran regard, uh, as you said, Christians and Jews? Well, to begin with, the term people of, of the book is uh, an honorific term, um, as opposed to saying non-believer or something like this. Um, but uh, saying people of the book means that we're referring to uh, certain groups of people Okay, so the title honors us, but does the Quran say to honor us itself? Like, look, I can say, um, uh, His Majesty, uh, King Henry V, and then in the same tongue dishonor him by saying he was an evil, disgusting, filthy man. So just because I give him a title doesn't mean that I'm honoring him if in the next breath I'm dishonoring him and his character. So what is the point if they say, oh, pe oh, people of the book, or people of the book, when your Quran dishonors us, it calls, the Quran calls us blasphemies, kafirs, filthy, Muslims can't start their five daily prayers without insulting us, and cursing us. Uh, as having a, a divine revelation from God, so they are faithful people uh, who are reading God's uh, revelations. In fact, in one passage of the Quran, it, it even praises the people for reading the scripture in the right way and uh, deciding to abhor evil and to... What they mean here by the right way is interpreting the Quran that fits with um, Islamic, or sorry, the, the Bible, reading the Bible and inter interpreting it solely and only in a way that fits with Quran, uh, the Quranic doctrine or, or doctrines of Islam. In other words, you accept the verses that speak about Jesus' humanity only and reject and throw away all the ones that speak about his divinity. And they even do this, you'll notice, with the Quran and with Islamic theology because the Quran in 19 verse 19 calls Jesus a holy son. He is a holy son of who? Of Mary? So why isn't Mary a prophet? Here's the double standards of Islam that you see the sexism, you see the, the, the racism and the, the, um, the uh, religious segregation and hatred built in by um, Muhammad because they believe that a prophet doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who does miracles because Muhammad couldn't do a miracle. Uh, doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that could tell the future because Muhammad didn't do a prophecy or doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who has a higher moral teaching because Muhammad certainly didn't have a higher moral teaching of the time. In fact, he went against what these people believed what was morally right. Uh, there's one hadith where uh, the, the Bedouin come to him and they say, you kiss boys? We don't do that. Um... And so they believe, okay, a prophet is somebody who has spoken to an angel. When Mary spoke to an angel, why isn't she a prophet in Islam? Because it is a sexist religion. Um, built for the man, made for the penis of the man, all of the uh, promises of heaven are just strictly for men. This is a religion that is a promise of Satan by a pimp god, Allah, and it's going to lead you to hell. So Muslims, take in consideration, don't use, because this is your cultural value, don't use this garbage. We're talking about uh, the truth of God that extends beyond cultures.
and beyond what family you were born into and beyond where you grew up. No, you believe in Issa, and r right, what you're going to say is he's a messenger of God, but we believe that he is God in the flesh, showing us his glory and teaching us, means that Jesus' words are authoritative above any others, and his actions are how we are to reflect our own life and behave. Not Muhammad, who married a six-year-old girl, who, who was a warlord, who was a slave trader, who did all these things, but Jesus... Because for many years, people were saying, where is God? Show me God. So he showed us his glory in the form of his Son, Christ the Lord. May all glory, honor, and praise be to him forever and ever. Amen. No, you believe in Issa. You don't believe in our Jesus. You believe in a false version of Christ which the Bible calls the Antichrist. And your Antichrist of the Bible, of the Quran, is the real, uh, of Islam, is the real Jesus of the Bible. If uh, in the judgment of God and the separation of people, uh, some being put in heaven, some being put in hell, uh, so uh, the, all of these are very common. There's a common history, there's a common theology, and there's also a, a common uh, set of uh, ethics and, and practices. Right, but here's where Satan has poisoned Muslims. That they are, have been deceived by him. That when somebody wants to be poisoned, Muslims have the idea of thinking that because the Quran mentions Satan a few verses and stay away from him, then that means it's from God. Well, I could use the same thing to justify uh, Christianity and prove Christianity but, to be true. But that's not... What makes it true? Because they reject, the, the Quran says to reject evil. Well, what does it mean to follow Allah? That you can marry and divorce little girls, as 65 verse 4 says? That you, that you must fight and kill those who don't believe the same as you? In fact, if you don't, according to um, 48 verse 16 of the Quran, you will receive no blessings from Allah. From Allah. But what he is doing is because he does not have the upper hand and he's living in the West, is he must teach this kind of teaching that is not even consistent with Islamic theology to try and butter people up to it because they cannot fight. They don't have the upper hand. They don't have an army here. But you take the same Muslims and put them in an Islamic country and you try to uh, spread Christianity or or talk about Jesus in a light that is not consistent with Islamic theology, they will chop your head off. Now, here in the West, living among the Christians, we allow you to speak about the Quran, to speak about Islam, because we allow questioning. We allow people to think for themselves. Jesus said many times, reason for yourself about what I say if it's from God or not. I believe God gave us all a brain, and we must use it. Well, it seems as though I'm out of time, so stay tuned for part two.